Dolly, that cow today. It's cold today. I did not look at the forecast <laughs> well at all. My oh my oh my oh my oh my. This is the way. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Chopper Fit channel. My name's Brett. And we make the motorcycle videos and motorcycle vlogs here on YouTube. Today is the very very first episode that we are moto vlogging with the Z900 RS. I did want to make this video a lot sooner than I am actually making it now. The problem is I bought this bike with only 300 miles on it. So I still had to get a lot of the braking mileage done. So to put it in perspective what Kawasaki recommends is for the first three, four, five hundred miles, they want you to do nothing above four thousand. This is torture. <laughs> and, uh, let me just tell you, doing uh, no RPMs above four thousand really just sucks on this bike. And that truck's loud. So yeah, I uh, kept it below four. Now, did I keep it below four the whole time? No. But before I did a full on initial test ride, I at least wanted to be able to enjoy the bike a little bit further. Now that I'm at 500 miles or so, I can bring that RPM number up to about 6,000 RPM. And I can have a lot more fun. I will say, ooh, one, it's very windy today. So I do apologize. Again, I did not, <laughs> I didn't look at the forecast at all before I came out here today. I just thought, let's just do it over my lunch break and get it done. Nick, bitch, why you failed? Kind of regretting it. Kind of regretting it. Nah, I never regret it. Never regret it. <laughs> and so this video here today is to tell you about my initial impressions out of owning the bike for right about 250 miles now. So we'll first start off with the comfort of this bike. I was a little unsure how this bike was going to fit me personally. Uh, for those new to the channel and finding Z900 RS content, I am six foot two and about 345 pounds. I have a 32 inch inseam. So yeah, I'm a bigger guy. <laughs> The bike for me fits me very well. When I first purchased the bike, however, I did realize that there was, it wasn't an aftermarket seat, but Kawasaki actually sells two versions of the RS seat. They make a standard one, which I am now on, and they also make a low one. And the low one kind of puts you in the bike a little bit more and would allow you to flat foot. I think it's about an inch difference, inch and a half difference between the two. Not a lot, but it's enough to actually make a noticeable difference in how the bike rides and handles. So I decided that I needed to have the increased height. What the increased height does is it does provide, you know, another extra inch of foam and cushion inside of there. So, you know, for my, my fat butt, <laughs> It actually provides a lot of comfort and I can go for quite a while on this bike before I need to take a break. I will say, if you are a taller rider, such as myself, that low seat may not be for you. So you want to make sure when you are buying it, you're definitely getting the seat that you want. I feel like a lot of the America Z900s came with the taller seat that I am on right now. But the guy who I bought it from had to put the, the low one on. Oh man, what? you're just ruining it. I don't know why. Maybe this was maybe like a wife's bike because there are a lot of like, you know, small things that were done to the bike that could imply like maybe a new rider or something along those lines. So you want to be flat footed. Who knows? Who knows? So the comfort of the seat is good, especially for a stock seat. I wouldn't mind looking into some of the other seats that are out there, but they just look hideous. So for now, stock is going to be the way to go. 
maybe I'll reach out to Mean City Cycles and add some extra foam or some double foam or whatever they call it and we can uh, go a little bit longer even. So that is the seat. Now, you might next be thinking, man, that just doesn't look very comfortable. I mean, you got the mid pegs on there or the, you know, they're not even, you know, your legs aren't stretched out at all. And you're right, they're not. But what that does for me is twofold. One, it's actually very comfortable. The knee angle that my leg is bent back at actually feels really, really good. Ooh, a little windy through that turn. Ugh. It feels kind of like I'm basically just kind of sitting in the chair at home, which is about the, you know, how I like to spend most of my day. <laughs> it's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. Now the leg is bent back a little bit, so if you do have some knee issues, you might run into something along those lines, but I have some knee problems and it doesn't, doesn't hurt at all. Uh, I knew I wasn't gonna really have a knee problem with this bike, given that I've been riding the Triumph for so long. Uh, that was one of the reasons I bought it last year was to see cheaply if I could get used to a mid control set and I definitely, definitely have. Now the other thing that this has allowed me to do, and I have noticed with this bike, is it allows more control. With your legs further back and you can kind of hug the tank, you really have a lot more control as far as the in and outs of the, of the cornering. Now granted, this bike is like 150 pounds lighter <laughs> than my Dyna, but this thing just eats up corners and I feel like the Dyna can hold its own pretty well too. But man, this thing, you just keep going and you just keep leaning and leaning and leaning. Now, I don't want to lean too much. I got my 360 down there. But uh, I have no problem leaning this bike over. Again, I put that on the, the mid-set controls. I think it's just overly comfortable. I've heard of people who have a Dyna with the mid-controls can handle even better as well. Same with the V-Rod when I had it. That was one of the modifications I was going to do was add a, a mid-set. Not actual controls, but a mid-set. Just, you know, kind of do that so overall the seating position is good it's very good let's see here make our turn into the lake road and look at all that lovely salt that we're battling still Ugh. seat feels good legs feel good how do the arms feel the arms feel pretty good as well now i have not done any adjustments to the handlebars themselves uh, they do just have like a top clamp here, so I know if I wanted to, I could loosen that top clamp and move them forward a little bit. And I'm not quite to that point yet, but it is very comfortable. I have zero wrist pain. The only thing that actually hurts a little bit with this bike, in terms of the arms and hands, is just how tiny these actual handlebar grips are. They, they're so tiny. I'm used to gripping like on a inch and what an eighth or whatever Ooh, bad turn but i'm used to gripping on an inch and an eighth or whatever and it actually you know you don't have to grip as much and so my hand doesn't cramp as much so with this i do get some hand cramping going on just have to shake it out but i think it's probably more of a muscle thing than anything else and over time i'm sure it will dissipate <laughs> ah yeah that's the next thing let's go and let's go and address that monkey <laughs> the power of this thing wow so i am used to riding you know harleys which have, you know, the mid 70s on horsepower, 80s on torque or so. The V-Rod was a little different. I feel like the V-Rod actually prepared me for this, but because the V-Rod had so much top end power, just like this one does. This thing has 110-ish horsepower and it weighs 500 pounds. I haven't even fully broke it in the motor. I don't know if I will ever, ever see 10,000 RPMs on this bike. I don't have a need for 10,000 RPMs on this bike. That's not what this bike is meant for. This bike is 
just to cruise through the corners. You can get low with them if you want to, but it's not a time attack vehicle or motorcycle. This is a fun loving cruising bike that has a lot of power and reserve. Now, someday, someday I will, I'll, I'll, I'll rev up those RPMs. But for now, uh, it's just, you know, 6,000 is fun. I can only imagine what like seven is gonna feel like. And I'll probably do eight just to see, but I really have no need for much above the six to seven range. Probably not. No, but I do it anyway. Except unless you love that sound. Oh my God. So yeah, let's talk about the sound. Downshift a couple here. Get to this little bit of a hill. And just listen to her purr. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that thing sounds good. For a Kawasaki bike, from what I have found out, this has got to be one of the best sounding stock bikes that you can get. Yes, the sound that you're hearing, if you can hear it at all, is the stock exhaust. Oh, it just has such a great tone to it. So yeah, that's one thing I do like now. That's one of the things that I want to ultimately change on the bike is the exhaust. Even as good as it sounds, I, I want to go full on retro. And there's one company that makes a four into four exhaust. So two pipes on either side instead of just the single four into one can that this one has. I think that would look so awesome on here and sound so good. But Brett doesn't want to go into so much debt. <laughs> There are some annoyances with the bike. Uh, one of them kind of just happened there. I'm not gonna get into those in too much in detail today. Uh, and it's really probably more of a, a gear thing for myself, but when I am under acceleration like that sometimes, my boot does not allow for the transmission to settle back down. And when I go to upshift again or down, you know, coming off of that gear, it's not actually upshifting like it's supposed to. But I got a list of about five or six different annoyances that I don't like about the bike. Nothing major, nothing that I would ever change my mind over, but that's gonna be a future episode. So yeah, you gotta keep coming back if you wanna hear that. Ooh, 25. So with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video here today. I know this is just kind of like an initial impressions. I do plan to do a full on review, get into more details about the specs and whatnot later, but Right now, those things are out there for everyone else. I mean, there's tons of videos out there about this kind of motorcycle. If you are looking for just an overall impressions, that's what I do. I love just to smile and ride this bike. But that being said though, I do unfortunately have to get back to my other job because YouTube only pays about 30 bucks a month. So I need to go back and make some real money and I will catch you guys on the next Dark Side as this is the way. Shopper Pets, see you on the next one. Thanks for joining me, guys. Later.